Hello. So Vinayak Habar, okay, hi, good evening. So your question is, what are the possible MS specialization second take to work with IoT? Okay, that's a good question. So um, basically you can just do a master's in embedded systems or uh, electrical engineering and uh, maybe uh, also it depends on the country. Maybe if you are in India, then you can just do a normal like electrical engineering degree like or uh, power systems because IoT has like uh, enormous uh, applications. So you can just uh, um, choose like you have like a lot of options of the fields you can choose. So even in power systems, you can just work with IoT and uh, in uh, uh, building constructions can just work with IoT and in big network security can just work with IoT. So there are like a lot of uh, fields out there like they are needed uh, this uh, IoT thing. So yeah, I can just, it depends on the country maybe. What platform? Uh, platforms, okay, like maybe the cloud platform limitless science okay so the platform means uh what kind of platform there are like cloud platforms hardware platforms gateways every like there are a lot of platforms so uh if if you're talking about this cloud platform maybe you can just go with um, gcp google cloud platform that's what i use um, and if you need a free thing you know just a normal uh, smart home projects for smart home projects you can go just go with Adafruit IO. So we will just cover this in this session. So that's don't worry about that. So is there any other questions? Uh, actually getting back to Vinayak Habar's question about this MS specialization. So basically I'm just doing my master's in Germany. So here the um, it's a hub of automobiles automotives, everything. So we have this companies, Bosch, Daimler, Audi, Volkswagen, everything here. Like I'm basically, I'm living in Stuttgart. So here we have a lot of companies here, like the whole city is like uh, full of this automotive companies. And uh, uh, if you are doing IoT, then you can just do something like uh, uh, masters in automotive software engineering, something like that. So the field, the masters related to the automotive field, but you will be working in IoT. So, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, Daniel, okay, yeah, we can start now. So, um, okay. Okay, yeah. Basically, uh, this webinar is like more like an introduction to IoT. So it's not like I'm gonna cover like advanced stuff. So if you don't know like what is IoT, then this is for you. So yeah, we'll start. Before that, I'll introduce myself. So I'm actually an. Uh, I did my bachelor's in BEC. So I did my bachelor's in electrical engineering and I passed out in 2016. And after that, I uh, got placed in Cognizant. And there I worked for one and a half years. And uh, um, here I am. I'm doing my master's in Germany, like doing the course embedded systems in Technical University of Chemnitz. So uh, uh, during my studies, I completed my uh, six months voluntary internship at Bosch. Uh, I worked as a DevOps developer in IoT. And then uh, I'll be just continuing with my work student on the same team. And uh, my interest has like, my focus is mainly on IoT and Python programming. And uh, yeah, I, had a, I have a startup, it's called IoT EDU. It's basically focusing on uh, uh, blogging stuff with IoT. So if you uh, need any like 
uh, articles, if you need to refer articles, and if you need to consult any project or uh, any ideas, then you can I have given my website link here, iotforbigness.com. So um, I have also like given my personal email ID, so you can just contact me like uh, anytime. Like if you have any doubts in IoT or if you have any doubts in uh, projects or something. Okay, so that's me. So we can just start. So um, today's agenda is first we'll see what is IoT and then what are the hardware uh, available to work with IoT and how do we use this connectivity and we'll see about some use cases, applications, something like that. And uh, we'll talk about this cloud platforms and um, a small introduction to these uh, gateways such as Raspberry Pi and Arduino. And then we'll talk about uh, Industry 4.0. And uh, at the end of the session, we'll just talk about what are the op opportunities in IoT. Okay. Meanwhile, we'll be having some break in between uh, the session. Yeah. So, yeah. What is IoT? So, according to my opinion, so IoT consists of three main uh, uh, process, or you know, you can say like uh, uh, three, three, three main things. Like first is sensors. Without sensors, no, there is no IoT at all. So first main thing is sensor. So without uh, the sensors can be like even a camera, or uh, there are a lot of sensors. I think you guys are engineering students, right? So you might know like what are the sensors available in the market. So next thing is like how the sensors are connected. Okay, that is connectivity. So next, like for whom we are connecting, for the people and the process, the, who are the end users? So yeah, so these three combination together, like, you know, these three entities uh, together, join together things to be called as internet of things. So, yeah so we'll see like one by one like what is sensors what is connectivity and what are the like who are the people who are using this technology okay okay um sensors so this is you know like what is sensor so you know like there are like various sensors available like uh thermistor piezoelectric sensor piezoelectric sensor is nothing but which um finds the vibration and thermistor is like to find the temperature and they're like magnetic sensors uh, they're like optical sensors even sometimes as i told the camera access sensors and uh, yeah pressure sensors humidity sensors so without the sensors there is no like iot okay Yeah, so uh, yeah, so there are like various sensors available in this market. So if you're like doing an IoT project, first step is to buy sensors. Okay, so that's what I can tell you. So, um, so next, like uh, connectivity. So one side we have sensors. So what do we do with the sensor? So we should actually connect those sensors, right? So in this um, image, you can see about uh, various connectivity protocols like uh, Ethernet, uh, power line, and everything in the low range. And we have Bluetooth, Zigbee, Z-Wave, uh, something in the middle range, something as Wi-Fi. And if you go advanced, you can just see the 3G, 4G, LTE, NB-IoT, cellular, everything. So these, uh, and if you go beyond that, you'll be seeing this GPS. Okay, so the satellites. So these are the connectivities and um, there are like a lot of things you had heard about this IoT, something like uh, uh, smart home, smart city, something like that, right? So yeah, for smart home, uh, Probably you had heard about this network thing. So one is like PAN, one is LAN, one is MAN, and one is WAN. So PAN is something like personal area network. So if you can see this blue line, 
it goes the uh, till here and it gives some range so for personal area network so for the personal something like um, within yourself if you are creating a iot project then you don't need such kind of connectivity so it should be like personal so for personal you can just use ethernet uh, you can use bluetooth something like that so if you just go one step ahead you can use this local area network and this goes this is in red color and it gives some range c you can use um, this is something like uh, a smart home okay something like smart home and for that you can use till wi-fi okay so and then for another one step beyond we can just use smart city for smart city you can just use metropolitan area network and for that we obviously need wi-fi uh, 3g 4g and um, who knows after two to three years we will be having 5g also so and uh, another one step beyond uh we do have this wide area network so for that like uh we we have uh, so many signals from gps right so that kind of uh, uh connectivity is provided by satellites so this is the basic idea of connectivity okay so we do have sensors at one end we do have like connectivity protocols and for whom we are like giving so for the end users so uh yeah so these are the end users so like who are all using this iot uh they're like for energy purpose for supply chain management for blockchain for control and automation for cloud uh for you know customer relation and support or to track a location for example like uh, if you need to track a location or a vehicle or something like that you can just use this iot and if you need to control any mechanism you can just use this iot if you can just um, uh, see some analysis in your finance even that you can see iot for example if for the financial analysis so how come like financial analysis iot is used i'll give one like small project uh, example recently my um, interns in my uh, startup company they have like uh, uh, came up with this idea and that is like you have heard of this amazon go right so basically you no need to uh, uh you no need to pay anything in the shop all the uh, cameras are like there are like thousand cameras are facing uh, on the shelf and you can just have one simple app and with a qr code just scan it and go inside the shop and you can just uh, they'll give you a bag where you can just put all the uh things which you want to buy and you can just come out without paying so this is something like a financial uh, uh market analysis the thing is like my 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 interns they did something like a prototype okay so the thing is they had like a raspberry pi camera fixing in the shelf or something and they have like 10 apples or something so using this open cv they are just taking away away a few apples and that is like a customer related thing if they are like shopping they'll take two or three apples right so these data is like you know how many apples are like missing in that particular timing window so these kind of data will be like you know stored in the cloud and uh, um with that data if there is like a three months data you had all heard of this machine learning okay so using that machine learning uh, uh, prediction we can just predict using this data uh, so how will be the uh, cost of those apples and the sale of those apples for the next 3 months or 1 year so this is something like financial analysis so iot is nothing but we are like creating the data so iot is creating the data so a step beyond that is like machine learning so using those data they will just predict uh, how the sale is how the product is something like that so uh, to say in layman terms iot is nothing but to create a hell amount of data so this is something like an iot and also like we have we have like a lot of uh, applications to control also we can just sit in our home and we can just control um, machine in industry 
and even now they are doing that in in germany like uh, we guys are working from home so basically we'll be um, controlling a gateway sitting in our home so that is iot so there are like a lot of applications like a lot it, it can do um, a lot so to recap so these are the three basic uh, three main components or components like three main parts like uh, one is sensors and another one is like connectivity and uh, the third thing is like who is using that so you can ask like like um, when i was studying this particular uh, flow i was uh, thinking about like how a sensor is connected how a sensor is where is where the sensor is connected like how the sensor data is like uh, like enabled for the other user so how how is that possible so before that we will have to see some use cases where the sensors and the connectivity plays a major role so as yeah as i said the interactions between these entities such as sensors connectivity and the end users are uh, creating this new types of smart applications and services so yeah we are like um, so all those uh, devices in the market like smart outlets activity trackers and uh, thermostats parking sensors so these are the already um, smart devices in the market so if you don't know about this you can just uh, google it about what is this so if you have used alexa that uh, amazon alexa so we do have that uh, power outlet so if you just give a command um, whatever device is connected to that outlet will be like switched on so this is iot okay so you are running uh, on a track and you need to uh, like count the steps right so there is this activity trackers and that is not iot but when you send those data to the doctor or you know your cat taker or for your own analysis to the cloud and you can just uh, see those data from anywhere in the world that is iot and even smart thermostats so if you have a thermostat in your uh, uh, room so whenever you are like using that room then it will like uh, and will be like using that uh, presence of human being in that room and it will just work according to that it will just adapt your uh, usage patterns it will be like turning down the temperature and turning up the temperatures like according to the patterns so the, so what is the use of this so this is this will be useful for uh, to cut the bills maybe yeah and there is parking sensor so you no need to uh, wait for the parking spot and you don't want to search for the parking spot so they are like uh, sensors connected to the parking lot or something so you'll be having an application where it says that the spot is free so you can just go and uh, um, use its spot for the parking so because of this like a lot of traffic is like reduced because uh mostly in city outlets like there are like a lot of um parking uh spots are like not available so using this applications like the traffic is reduced because the person knows that where is the parking spot available like nearby so he can he don't need to just stay on the roads searching for the parking spot so yeah so these are like popular connected devices available in the market if you have any chance you can just buy this and you can just try it out yeah and there are like lot of applications as i told like there so if there is a lot of applications so you have a lot of options to go which field that you can um, you can just choose whatever field and you can just work with iot so here in um, transport systems you can see the smart parking I've, actually i said you about this and you can just use a supply chain management shipping public transport
and uh, uh, traffic routing, all those things in the transport. And the most important applications or most important field is like uh, um, patient care, uh, elderly monitoring, um, hospital hygiene or food sensors, all these things. So, I mean, according to my opinion, the IoT plays a major important role in the medical systems rather than smart city or smart home. So then uh, if you go to the infrastructure, you can just uh, save a lot of uh, energy like uh, using these sensor or something, the uh, analysis of the occupancy of the person and you can just uh, analyze the uh, energy usage, lightning, all those things. And uh, yeah, if you go for uh, the smart home, you can just have this um, light bulbs, smoke alarm. Smoke alarm is like a normal thing in everywhere. And uh, uh, pet feeding and washer or dryer or something like that. So these are the uh, top applications. So if you go for... Uh, I don't know, someone is doing something on the slides. Maybe it's it's not good if you don't do that. Okay. So uh, we'll see some use cases. Uh, for use cases, something like where uh, the IoT is used. So yeah, there's a small story here. <laughs> This is something like smart city. So uh, there's a woman. Hello. Yeah, so there's a woman here and her son are in the downtown. I mean, downtown is something like city. So they are like looking for an appointment. Okay, so this uh, they they are like going for an appointment and uh, they are like stuck in the traffic or something with the car and they are like finding the parking area. So the they are like wireless sensors embedded in the parking lot. So they are like saying the lady that there is a sp spot available here. So you can just use that spot. So. Uh, and if you are like having a park, uh, I mean, a parking spot and with your car there, you can also just um, ask some people to go and repair that car using uh, authenticated information of that car. So in many areas in foreign countries, like there are like a lot of traffic because of uh, the parking spots. It's like a major thing till now. So in this case, uh, yeah, IoT is like playing a major role. And here in healthcare, so basically, uh, I, not in India, but in foreign, like a lot of people are like living on their own, like a lot of old people. So if there are like a lot of old people uh, living on their own, there will be no caretakers or no um, family or something like that. So for in that case, there are like a lot of sensors embedded in the house and uh, it will like monitor the patients and uh, uh, it will track each and every activity and all the activity are like 24 by seven, like they are giving to the hospitals or caretakers or the doctors to, for the analysis of the person in the house. So in this case, a lot of uh, applications are uh, there in the medical. And in smart buildings, so basically we can just uh, minimize the energy usage in the buildings, uh, in offices. Uh, when there is a person, then the lights will be on. When there is no person, like you know, there, there is no lights or um, air conditioner or something like that. So here we can just imagine that how much energy we can save. So this is one kind of application. So yeah, till now we saw a few um, use cases. So now we we'll, like we'll see like what is IoT cloud platforms. So we have sensors, we have Bluetooth, 
or Wi-Fi or 4G or something connect as a connectivity and how we uh, how do we like realize or analyze these data like to where uh, can we like authenticate this data so there are like a lot of uh, platforms available like AWS and uh, Google Cloud Platform, Bosch IoT Suite, uh, Oracle, IBM Watson. So, you know, all these um, companies, they're like acting as a cloud. They'll, uh, you know, these are not free, but you know, for some data, for some data, it is free. For example, like I can store something like one GB of data inside that. So the companies provide this space. So after like one GB, like you have to pay some uh, amount to store your data or something. So everything like is like you know uh, sending your data to the uh, cloud and uh, you can just analyze it uh, real time so if you need to if you need to uh, see the real time analysis of a data then this kind of uh, uh, cloud platforms are uh, interesting so my my um, option is like you can just use google cloud platform or uh, aws or uh, azure this is also like important uh, cloud platform so other than this they're okay -ish. so even this thing works is like doing better nowadays and uh, yeah so these are the like major uh, important uh, cloud platforms available now so yeah if you're doing a small project a small uh, a very very small budget project you can just go with adafruit io so it is also um, cloud it's not a cloud platform i can't say it's a cloud platform but it's like a platform which supports a messaging protocol called as mqtt so this is like a um, big thing you know in the field in the iot field like how how the sensors is um the, the data is like you know connected to the cloud and how the um, person will analyze those things the data so it's called as MQTT, so I'll just uh, tell about this later. So these are the basic cloud platforms available now. So the next thing is gateways. So here we have uh, the sensors, the cloud, and these blue dots are like maybe connectivity. So see, they are like a van, LAN, and everything. So what is it? thing in the middle so these are the iot gateways so the gateway is something like which opens the connectivity right you know remember the uh, thor film uh, the in the asgard uh, there's a person in the front we he opens and closes the gate uh, for, for a person who am like enter and exit so it's similar to that so all the authentication all the authorization everything all the security like so you can imagine that you have a hell amount of data in your cloud and you have sensors connected to one particular thing and uh, do you think like whoever whoever like uh, you know uh, access those data no so in that place we have this iot gateways so we'll see like what what is this gateways and what are the gateways available um and like how you can use those gateways in IoT projects. So we'll see about that. So yeah, simple Arduino, you know, it's like one of the IoT gateway, but the thing is this Arduino, like many of uh, you people know what is Arduino, but still this can't be used in IoT uh, projects unless it is connected with a Wi-Fi module or something because Arduino, you know, is something like it's a microcontroller. It's not a microprocessor or something like Raspberry Pi or something like that. So it has no connectivity at all. There is no Wi-Fi. There is no Bluetooth. For so for that case, you can just use some Shield. So they are like available in the markets. So you can just uh, use those Shield to connect with Arduino, you know, or you can just use ESP12. Uh, ESP32, all, all those things are like Wi-Fi modules. So you can just simply use those things with the, uh, you can use those um, micro, uh, uh, use those uh, ASP modules as a Wi-Fi connection to this uh, Arduino Uno. So if you don't know like what is Arduino Uno, 
let me explain this. It's just a microcontroller. We we have this analog pins, digital pins here, and there's like two pins for serial connection. And uh, there are like a few ground pins and voltage pins. And basically it is like using Atmega 328 microcontroller. And there's a reset button here. And here, if you see here, you have this LED, which is like directly connected with uh, the uh, 13th pin. And there's like um, a TX and RX transmitter receiver for the serial communication between the uh, uh, other microcontrollers. And how do you connect this Arduino Uno? You know, like they're like, uh, can just use with external power supply. But in, in that case, you should be like already flashed a program in before. So basically you have to use this USB and you have to connect it with your laptop or your system and use that with uh, Arduino IDE. And once you program that uh, Arduino IDE, like uh, the program, just simply remove that. USB plugin, just connect it with, uh, go to the field where you are like setting up your IoT project, just use the external power supply and you can just work with it because um, Arduino is not something like you have to be connected with the computer all the time. It, it, it is like smart thing, you can just, uh, the previous program which you had like uh, compiled and uploaded will be stored in the flash memory here and it will just work with that program later on. So this is about this Arduino. And yeah, there are like a lot of articles in my website about this Arduino in very detail. So you can just go through them. And next, this is like my, my love, this Raspberry Pi. So it is like a small computer. You can just use this uh, as a small computer. You can use, um, you can do many kind of things with this. So basically this, uh, this is 3B plus model. So the latest version is, um, Raspberry Pi 4B plus model. So yeah, if you have any chance, if you are like going to focus in IoT, so you should buy one Raspberry Pi. So it is like useful in many IoT projects. So basically I'll just give an introduction about this Raspberry Pi, about this um, pins and everything. So here we have this uh, general purpose input output pins so that here they have like 40 pins. So each and every pin has one particular uh, thing to do. So if, uh, maybe like a few sensor, sorry, a few uh, pins are useful to connect with the sensors. Few are like used to connect uh, the uh, SPI and few are like for ground pins, few are for ground, uh, voltage pins, uh, few are for like uh, TX and RX transmitter and receiver, all those things. So this is called as GPIO, general purpose input output. So uh, yeah, here we have this Broadcom BCM. This is like a heart of the Raspberry Pi. So this is the main processor. So the same processor is used in every uh, Raspberry Pi uh, modules, but uh, I think um, this is one GB RAM. So in 4B plus model, we have uh, three different kind of versions. So one is for one GB RAM, one is for, uh, I think, or I don't know, like 4 GB RAM and one is for 8 GB RAM, I guess. Or one, two, four, I don't know. Like there are like three kind of uh, uh, versions for the Raspberry Pi 4. I mean, it differentiates with the RAM. And then we have uh, this H HDMI output to connect with the monitor. And um, yeah, three, 3 GB and 4 GB. Uh, I don't think. 3GB will be there. There's not 3GB RAM. Okay, then uh, we have this uh, camera module to connect uh, with the Raspberry Pi camera and we can uh, even use, uh, we can even use to connect with uh, the audio. And we do have this ethernet port and four USB ports. So in uh, Raspberry Pi 4, we have uh, two USB 3.0. And um, yeah, and how, how do you power this? So you can just use this uh, USB 2.0 for the Raspberry Pi 3B plus model, which is not uh, the same with Raspberry Pi 4. It is different. The pin is different. So yeah, this is something like a very, very basic 
introduction of Raspberry Pi. Also, if you need any information of about this Raspberry Pi and projects or something like to connect with LED, like how it uh, works with LED, you can just refer my website for the articles. Um, the thing is, in Raspberry Pi, we don't have this analog pins at all. So that means we cannot uh, connect analog uh, sensors at all. So in that case, we can just use this uh, because there is no ADC. Here in Arduino, we have uh, this uh, six ADC pins here. So we can use uh, sensors like piezoelectric sensors or thermistor or a potentiometer or something here but he, in this case i don't think we can use all the sensors so in that case you should use one adc uh, my uh, suggestion is like you can use mcp3008 so you can just use that it's a complicated circuit but still it is worth it so again if you need any projects or ideas about this mcp3008 you can just go to the website yeah okay so before this uh i think we can just take a break maybe uh we'll be like uh come we'll come back after some 10 minutes so meanwhile you can just ask some questions if you have i'll be opening the chat session Okay, yeah, we, I think we can continue with the sessions. I think there is no need for a big break. Okay, maybe like hold on to your questions. Maybe there's a Q&A session at the end of this uh, webinar. So we can just ask the questions there. Okay, yeah. So yeah, we'll just um, proceed with the industry 4.0. So till now we saw like what is IoT and applications of this IoT and where the IoT is used. Um, so what it contains everything. So we'll see like what is industry 4.0. So I think you know this industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 and now 4.0 like so in 1700s in that uh, year uh, we do have uh, we we came up with uh, the mechanization on the the steam and water power so that is the first industrial revolution in 1700s that took place and later on that in 1800s um, it there was something like uh, electrical power there is a huge war between uh, the tesla and you know Edison, so which is better, AC or DC. So that kind of stuff was happening in 1800s. And moving on in 1900s, we had some robotics, introductions of robotics and uh, IT systems and uh, the computers came up with this kind of automation and something like that. And uh, in uh, 2000s, so now we have this smart factory, smart home, smart city, machine learning, IoT, everything, everything. So the so now we are in the industry 4.0. So in this industry 4.0, like uh, many many companies in um, even in Germany and other teams where where I am working, so they are like using industry 4.0 everywhere. So every this is like a talk of the town or talk of the company so everywhere they are like using this industry 4.0 so even like uh, my father is working in uh, integral coach factory in chennai so he he also like uh, he was asking about this what is industry 4.0 like they are like implementing all those things in the coaches and everything so yeah so this is also being implemented everywhere now so everything uh 
so what is what is this industry 4.0 like uh how is that uh, possible like for example you can take my uh, father's company like you know uh, the central government has uh, came up with this industry 4.0 something like may for example if there are like higher authorities coming and coming to the um shell or something you know the factory area and checking all those uh, they will analyze all those data as whether the production is completed today or uh, that whether the target is achieved or something like that so with this industry 4.0 so every detail every data will be like you know in the cloud and they can access the the authenticated person Okay, so no one can access the authenticated person can access those data, and they can analyze. So what is going on in the factory? So that is industry 4.0, and with this data, so we can uh, with this data of the industry or the uh, company or the factory, they can uh, predict the uh, future. or uh, uh, they can come up with some analysis so how the industry will be in the future uh, something like that so yeah there are like a lot of applications in industry 4.0 so the one big thing is like iot and uh, the rest of the things like uh, augmented reality cyber security uh, they have big data blockchain and everything uh cloud computing system integration everything so there are like lot of uh, things involving in industry 4.0 and so what next so we do have 4g now so everyone are talking about this 5g 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 everywhere so after 5g after 5g so these are the uh, interesting uh, things they will be drones and they'll be like industrial blockchain so you know like what is blockchain right a um, blockchain is basically where you can just find about that particular product for for example if you are like uh, uh, buying a, a bag of apples so you can just uh, see the uh, pr- the place where the apples was originated from so that is one kind of data so you can even use this industrial blockchain here and you can just uh, use this 5g 5G, 5g is something like enormous so with that amount of you know uh connect network you can achieve whatever you want so uh, there'll be like drones and there'll be like add- additive technology vr ar everything everything will be like uh, um advanced yeah so this is some kind of uh, industry 5.0 and yeah as i was telling that about uh, um mqtt right so i haven't added that slide in the uh this in this uh, webinar ppt maybe i'll share the link later about the what is mqtt something so we do have sensors it's just a recap we have sensors we have this lan wan or something that uh, uh, comprises of this um uh bluetooth or uh, wifi or uh, uh, satellites some kind of connectivity and uh, there are some end users who are using that right so i'll give you one a uh, real time example okay so you have a plant in your home uh, you have a plant so you do have an uh, hardware okay there is a moisture sensor which is connected to the raspberry pi and the raspberry pi is connected to the relay relay you know what is relay so it is something like when it is uh, turned on uh, then it will just do some mechanical works so that is relay so this is your hardware so in this hardware you have this moisture sensor and as a gateway you have this raspberry pi and you have a relay connected to that so you you are like connecting this whole hardware to the uh, you are like connecting this moisture sensor inside that uh, plant so you are just traveling um, abroad and you are just connecting with the power okay imagine that you are connecting with an external power so you are just traveling abroad or somewhere uh, and you want to, you don't have any person to water this plant so you can just see this data okay and there is like a water a water uh, uh, 
jug or something connected with the relay or something like a, a bottle of water or something like that. Okay, so this is your example. And you're like traveling abroad and you want this, uh, you want to water this plant. Using this cloud, you can just even, you know, um, do that thing. So you can just uh, click off one button. You can just uh, water the plants from wherever you are. So this is something like MQTT, something like uh, you are getting a message from your plant in your home that the plant is getting dried and now uh, you are setting one threshold actually. So if, when it goes above the threshold, it will be automatically plant, uh, like water the plant. Or you know, if it goes beyond the threshold, like if it is not achieving the threshold, then no need of uh, watering the plant. yeah yes mqtt is a communication protocol so for uh okay so you can just do this so this is because you are like subscribed to the water plant in your home and your water plant is publishing all the data so this is generally this called as pups up it's called as publishing subscribing for example in you you have your own favorite youtube channel right so what they are telling always they are like telling subscribe to us you for the new uh, videos or something like that right so when you subscribe to that you will get a notification when a person is posting a new video on that youtube channel so this is something like that the person in the youtube channel they they are like publishing the video and as you had subscribed for that you will get a note you will get notified that the particular person is like subscribe sorry published for the um published a video so it is something like that so in our uh, in our case in the in the in the plant situation so you are like subscribing for the plant you so you need data and the plant is like publishing the data to you so with this uh, protocol you can just do whatever you can you can just water the plant or you can just do the analysis or something like that so yeah, this is uh, MQTT. So there are like a lot of, this is called as messaging protocol, uh, basically communication protocol. So this is uh, useful in various scenarios and um, uh, there are like a lot of messaging protocols called as uh, REST API, uh, XMPP or something like that. So yeah, so these are the uh, main messaging protocols will be, uh, learning when you are doing about this iot projects or something okay um i guess i mean if you need something about this information i can just there are like a lot of um uh, brokers it's called as brokers so see if you are like publishing and subscribing there should be a person in between right a person or a thing so that's called as broker so there are like a lot of brokers available uh, now um myself like i'll be using this adafruit io okay and then uh, i'll be using the mosquito with the raspberry pi so yeah there are like a lot of brokers available maybe you need to search for that and this is very interesting part about this messaging protocols that's how like you know the data are like uh, going and coming going and coming all those things uh, okay for this opportunities, as I said earlier, so there are like a lot of opportunities. Like if you are doing, if you are like CSE student and you want to work with IoT, the appropriate thing is you can um, work in network security. So the thing is like no one, can, if you are doing an IoT project with the cloud, when you are doing an IoT project with the cloud, so uh you'll be uh giving some uh, parameters for the authentication so in iot according to my opinion security is the first and foremost thing should be like taken care of so without security um i don't know like uh, it's a waste of time see uh, when you are using a uh, for example there are like a lot of iot enabled devices in the market right so uh, as i said in the previous slides um yeah we can take an example like whirlpool uh, a machine like whirlpool washing machine so you don't know that they'll be having a lot of things in the private uh, that uh, uh, what is the privacy policy 
so you don't know that what the hell have they written in that so in one particular line they will be written that we are not um, uh what to say responsible for your datas or uh, data breach uh, something like that so they have written and we don't know that with the excitement of the smart appliance will be just uh, enabling that option or just uh, signing that uh, form or something like that so it, there is like a trust issues here so we ha you have to trust trust the particular uh, company like uh, you cannot buy uh, it's my suggestion that you don't buy uh, the smart appliances from uh, uh unknown brand or something you can just buy from okay from whirlpool or from bosch or from something like that so with iot like uh, there are like a lot of uh, uh data uh, analysis and everything so you have to trust the company so that plays a major role here so then you can just there are like a lot of opportunities such as energy consumption so this is something very important nowadays and also like medical area so if you are like interested in medical and you can just um, work with kind of th this kind of uh, thing uh, recently i did a project on healthcare iot the thing is like um, when a person has this particular disease called as dementia so dementia is a disease something like uh, they will forget everything uh not amnesia it's not like amnesia or something like that they will they they are like a lot of stages of the particular patient they will just forget everything so one point of time they will forget to switch off the tap or something uh, i don't know like how many of you like will watch money heist in that uh, lisbon's mother is having this disease dementia so she will be like forgetting everything so that kind of uh, nowadays like there are like no caretakers or uh, uh all the old people are living in the home alone and uh, it's uh, it's not good thing so for that kind of uh, house or for the kind of patient so i have just developed a small prototype from for my university so the thing is you'll be having this um raspberry pi with sensors called as piezoelectric sensors so if you are like, connecting that with the tap and you are like fixing one threshold so when a person or uh, when uh, when the old people you know when the old person is going uh, in front of the tap and uh, um using using uh, the water so basically it will just uh, if he forgets to turn off the tap then if the water goes on 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 and on and it will give some message to the caretaker that something is wrong with the home and they can just uh, use this relay uh, and they can just uh, analyze the situation in the home and they can just turn off the tap from wherever they are so in that case there are two things one is like okay why can't we use a general ir sensors so one thing is like i did uh, something for my university they needed some um, something like uh, this we can use ir sensors also and uh, yeah one more thing is like we can uh, why can't we use a camera in the home so we can just uh, see the person so usually in foreign countries there is a thing called as privacy so you can't use a camera or a video streaming device uh, video uh, streaming something uh, you know we can just authenticate that video streaming something like that in the home so this is something um, which is bad for the uh, person so they won't allow this in foreign countries so this is this is a basic idea of my uh, project like recently i did this yeah so this kind of uh, applications are like this is just a basic thing so if you are like going with advanced and advanced uh, the, the whole system will be like uh, enabled for the doctors uh, the 24 by 7 the, all the data will be going for the doctors or the person who is managing all this kind of uh, data in the hospitals and uh, if something is wrong an ambulance will be coming it will be triggering the ambulance and the ambulance will be coming to the home and um, yeah something like that so as i said there are like a lot of opportunities and a lot of field so it's not a uh, big thing so 
i mean they're like uh, nowadays a lot of technologies are also coming so uh, there are like a lot of challenges uh, in this iot field uh, they have to maintain the standards they have to uh, maintain the connectivity and uh, scalability everything the data and everything so there are like a lot of challenges also there in iot it's not like simply we have to connect the sensors with con uh, connectivity and we have to create those data there are like a lot of challenges a lot a lot of challenges so yeah it's not a um easy piece of cake but still it is like an interesting field so yeah so what are the programming languages you can just learn if you are doing this uh, iot project so i have just um, categorized into three different uh, sectors so three different field one is like devices if you are like uh, using uh, the devices something like cloud or uh, not cloud sorry sensors or something a small c is enough if you are like uh, working with a sensor something like that with an arduino or something so if you are connecting the sensor with the arduino as normal c is fine and if you are using that uh, as with a gateway generally i don't like java but i'll stick with python so you can use python even java is okay and if you are using with the cloud even even i'll go with python in that case um most people will be using javascript and node.js so in that case like i'll be using this python so yeah python is the most important uh, um programming language in iot even in machine learning i guess so start uh, you know learning python guys so yeah oh yes so i'll give some media references to learn um this iot the first link is like something it's it's mine so it's my website so you can just uh, uh, read all the articles uh, it's it's more like like tutorials to everything like raspberry pi or the node mcu and everything um, all the sensors and our connectivity and uh, every, everything is available there like a to z about this raspberry pi arduino you know everything and uh, i usually for this uh, blog iot for all this doesn't have a tutorial something uh, you know a project or something if you need a comprehensive uh, learning about this iot then you can just um, see this uh, refer this blog and uh, if you like raspberry pi you can just uh, go through this mac pi uh, a magazine so usually i had just subscribe for this and i'll be getting uh, mails from them every month of their uh, pdf copy so it's very very interesting it's like a it's it's a good book actually and um, yeah i can also uh, refer this iot now iot world i don't refer the magazine but the post the uh, the articles and uh, Uh, the discussions and the webinars in the iot now and iot world uh, websites it's very interesting and everything are like updated and uh, mostly like i'll hear like lot of uh, 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 many industrial people will be like talking about the challenges in iot and uh, everything so you can also take some courses in udemy or coursera Uh, about this iot and tutorials on raspberry pi and uh, arduino or node mcu something like that yeah mac pi doesn't have a subscription subscription fee if you want a copy of that book to your home then you have to pay it will be coming from london so i mean actually the office is in london so for the pdf version you don't need to pay for that uh, not only mac pi the raspberry pi.org has a, a huge amount of collections uh, of magazines they are like hello world uh, there are like lot of lot of other uh, magazines available in raspberry pi you can just refer that website it's very it's nice to see that and yeah you can just click this link for the books to refer uh, in my my opinion is like there's a book called as um, learn raspberry pi with uh, python so you can it's by willy you can just refer that book if you need a 
uh, good uh, understanding of Raspberry Pi, how it works with you know Python and everything. So you can just read that book. So later on, this you, you can just access this link and uh, uh, to refer the books for the IoT. Yeah. Now we'll move on to the question session. So. Yeah. Okay, first question, I'll just go uh, with the first question by Vinayak. So while making IoT products, do we still use controllers like Raspberry Pi and Arduino? Actually, um, okay, what kind of IoT products? Uh, I need to know this, Vinayak. Maybe you can just speak. Uh, good evening, ma'am, it's Vinayak. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Uh, for like the end product, usually uh, Raspberry Pi and uh, Arduino Uno. To my knowledge, we usually uh, use it to make the prototypes. Yes. Uh, let's say we have a smart garbage vehicle. Uh, up for we'll be using Arduino Uno and Raspberry Pi to make the prototype model of it. Yeah, uh, I think so I understood your question. I think I understood your question. The answer to your yes. question is like simple. Um, okay, I I am like working with uh, Bosch in the IoT field. Okay, so we don't use something like Raspberry Pi and uh, Arduino for the business kind of uh, thing. So we do have a lot of customers who have who uh, will require this kind of IoT thing, right? So that's where we work. In that case, for the testing purpose, we'll use the Raspberry Pi and uh, Node MC or something. We'll mostly use stick with Raspberry Pi for the testing purpose. So there are like a lot of companies there will they will be manufacturing the gateways. So basically the Raspberry Pi is a gateway, but there are like a lot of companies. For example, I can give you one name. It's called as Oasis. Uh, is there any I don't think there is a. Okay, I can't write anything. Yeah, so the name is Oasis. Maybe I can just type here. So uh, this is um, gateway manufacturing companies. For example, if the Bosch is saying to the Oasis company that we need a gateway uh, with this particular um, requirements the oasis company will manufacture the uh, gateway re uh, related to the requirements for example if we need some particular sensors some particular connectivity in the gateway so will the, they will just manufacture so it's it is same for the uh, uh, the thing which you ask like if, if there is a smart city if the government is uh, need some gateways for that they will approach for the gateway manufacturers and they will ask that uh, we need this kind of it's something like a tender uh, what is that a tender what is that it's something like yeah yeah they will just uh, do this thing so they, they it's not like you have to use Raspberry Pi. This is something like you are doing an IoT project of your own, and you you'll be using this Raspberry Pi. It's like oh, that's why that's why they tell this is open source. So what is open source? Yes. You can use it. Yeah. So if it's not open source, you have to pay for the thing. If you're using one more, project. one more doubt. I have two more doubts. Like uh, courses and uh, Coursera and Udemy are they really worth it when we are going for? Uh, higher studies and for uh, writing our SOPs and LORs? Mm. I don't know actually. Um, when you are like uh, giving an interview, okay? So it's good that you have done uh, some courses in Udemy or Coursera. Uh, I don't know in India, like are they allowing this kind of uh, uh, no, like applying to foreign universities. Like foreign uh, university? Yeah. No, no, they won't. They won't consider all those things. But they will consider the projects which you have done. Uh, if 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 your resume consists of like many projects, and if you are like at, uh, giving your GitHub profile or something, and in that uh, many projects are there, and uh, if you are like uh, giving. Uh, 
presentation in some conference or you know in like a paper presentation or something in uh, uh, in other college or something so that will be like a valid thing because anyone can get a certificate from udemy i guess so that will not be a factor in this case so the thing is you have to you know present in some college or something that will be like added advantage okay okay yeah so from sai uh, okay what is matlab and how is it related to iot matlab is something like um, python uh, it's like a programming language okay but how it is related to iot usually we don't use matlab at all uh, if you are unless you are using some image processing uh, kind of uh, projects uh, there is a project something project of something like uh, facial recognition of uh, this thing uh, uh, facial recognition image processing that kind of projects you will be using matlab and uh, yeah if you need to you know analyze the uh, uh, datas if you need to analyze the data as you can just use, use the matlab matlab no like it depends it depends on the project actually what kind of projects you are like working with see guys like iot is something like you have it's a trial and error method like if when i was working with uh, when i am working with a particular project i don't know like i have to figure out like what kind of sensor should i be using there what kind of connectivity is better and even sometimes like i get confused like what kind of uh, microprocessor should i be using for the uh, thing so for example in my case uh, I, ha i have been using the piezoelectric sensor in the project right in the my healthcare so i did not use raspberry pi in that i used a uh, board called this node mcu and this basically esp8266 because as i said raspberry pi doesn't have an analog pin so instead of going complicated circuit with raspberry pi uh, i went with node mcu esp8266 so it has only one analog adc pin so i had only one sensor okay fine i had connected with that so it supports wifi so that's a great thing i can just uh, connect it with the cloud so what else i need so in this case i needed an analog analog sensor so that's why i went with node mcu not with the raspberry pi so there is a lot of difference and everything is like a trial and error so you have to design a circuit for that and you have to work with the programming part and everything uh for your question like it depends on the uh kind of project you are working i uh, for my opinion like python is better so even you can uh, implement this matlab called as mat plot, uh, matplotlib in uh, in the tkinter for example as a gui and you can just uh, visualize the uh, graph and all so that you can do in python so next question from ashwin is it compulsory uh to use arduino i am without these microcontrollers how we can proceed to make with iot project products um yeah is, is, what is the question i don't understand is it compulsory to use arduino and ashwin if you are in the if you are if you are available you can just ask me directly i can't understand your question excuse me ma'am yes yeah so i have a doubt actually i do a lot of projects based on iot but uh, i am unable if like uh, we require more gpio pins uh, shall i show it like uh, what kind of gpio yeah. pins in raspberry pi yeah so uh, i yeah uh, not only raspberry pi i am asking which board can be uh, useful to make a project with a uh, lot of input output pins okay okay uh, what kind of sensors are you using yeah so i am uh, using a humanoid robot uh, making a humanoid robot like this one okay so uh, i need a lot of input and output pins which i should be controlling using iot okay okay lot of inputs and so outputs so what board uh, 
basically you can use um, multiplexer okay you can just use a uh, multiplexer or uh, you can just uh, uh, use a serial connection that's a simple one okay yeah you can just uh, uh, use serial and connection. then how to control those uh, pins via iot is uh, actually uh, i use uh, blink or okay. uh, things like that but uh, most probably i think uh, we are unable to use more buttons if you are using esp to 66 or things like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no dmcu we okay, have eight yeah. digital pins yes 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 we have eight digital pins in that yeah so for example if you have 10 yeah sensor, so so uh, the thing is the 10 sensors are in the okay. same place or in the different places or how is that all are in different places ma'am okay um i don't think you can uh, use uh, more than uh, eight sensors in the same board even if you are like connecting it with serial it gives the same output i mean both will act as a uh, same uh, uh, similar uh, thing okay for example if you are using two sensors in serial connection with the same port so for example if you are connecting that with d5 so if you are like giving an input to the d5 so the output will be like reflected to the d5 uh, uh, for the, uh, both the sensors okay that but case, what if i uh, want to use it individually you can use a multiplexer maybe so by using multiplexer you can control many uh, input and output yeah. pins yeah mm -hmm. maybe you can try that okay yeah thank you yeah. any other questions hello yes uh, ma'am uh, how long can a esp light be connected continuously like uh, the uh, lifetime of it it can be connected until you are like giving an external power supply like unless uh, or otherwise for example um yeah i can tell you one thing so you are connecting one sensor so you have to follow all the protocols right so you have to um deal with the circuit design some something like you have to give a particular resistor to the sensor so if you are not giving that resistor the board will be like fried up it won't work uh, ma'am i made a home automation system ma'am uh, using a, a using the blink cab now if i want to uh, run my lights i have to give power supply to the uh, node mcu board Okay. I'm using a charger for the Node MCU board, like a normal uh, USB phone USB charger. Okay. Will the board get fried up if I use it continuously? Um, no, I guess no. It depends on the manufacturing thing. No. If you're okay. like buying from the official thing, then it won't. uh and you should like maintain the protocols like what voltage are you giving and what kind of resistor in the circuit everything everything should be you know uh like everything should be like precise okay thank you ma'am yeah uh ma'am good evening uh, i have asked one question that uh, can a mechanical engineer can use uh, iot uh of course yeah in what kind of mechanical applications that's the question uh, uh that's why i asking because uh, if, if we can apply in what areas we can uh, use this iot see for example if you have a motor running in your factory so it is like a, yeah. uh, the it's running like 24 by 7 okay um you can just uh, view them like if it is running or not from your home or even sometimes you can just operate that machine from your home itself oh okay, okay. yeah hello ma'am yes 
Yeah, I have one more doubt. Actually, I uh, do home automation, like things. I have made many home automation things. So I am using Google, ma'am, for uh, oh. what to say, uh, for turning on the lights and switches. Uh, if you are going to use Alexa, how to run it? Should we skills like that, or is there any inbuilt app or something? You can use AWS, I guess. I think okay. there is something with AWS because Alexa is with AWS, right? And uh, yeah, actually, I don't have that uh, Alexa uh, that thing. I made it myself using the Raspberry Pi. So, will okay. it work on that or? Uh, I mean, you have a speaker and you had just done. Yeah, I was, yeah. And uh, you had just implemented that with Raspberry Pi. Yeah, it will work. Yeah, it will work, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, in order to improve that, uh, what can I do, ma'am? Like, uh, if we say uh, to sing something, it is uh, not singing or doing anything like that. So, or the Google Home, which I have, is also made using Raspberry Pi. Okay. So it can do everything other than this uh, other, like singing and uh, playing musics from uh, YouTube or. searching from webs like that yeah of course like ha, you have implemented the same sdk in this right like same thing uh, yeah. the application yeah so that's everything but if i say alexa sing me a song uh, like song name but it is uh, not able to sing up. so they are saying that we have to connect to some and we have to create a skill they are saying to create a skill like Yes, you have to create a skill for for the Alexa. Yeah. So for Google Home, how it works, ma'am? Uh, I have done. I have not done with Alexa, but I have done with Google Home. But it works fine, like for me. If I say anything, it will just do that. Uh, for the Alexa, maybe you have to add some skills, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Uh, shall I show you that, ma'am? Actually, uh, I have built. Uh, maybe you can just contact me later. I have to. Yeah. You okay. Email ID. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Sure. Yes. So, Vinayak, what are the projects that we can work on to get an internship opportunities from IoT startup and companies? Yeah. Uh, what are the projects? Basically, you can just work with some home automation projects or. Um, With a good knowledge in Python or something like that, you will get uh, some internship opportunities in IoT startup and companies. It's not really, it's not like you have to do this kind of projects, but uh, the knowledge matters more. So basically, if you have done projects, then you had like a lot of uh, knowledge in that. maybe to prove the company can just do some home automation or something related to the network security or something like that some cryptography or this is something like advanced but still yeah can try it uh, next question uh in uh, in my startup like uh, currently there are uh, uh 15 to 20 people working with uh, like without stipend so if you are interested uh, in this opportunity like uh, i'm providing this internship opportunity to everyone like the deserved people like uh, if you know something uh, or if you want to learn if you want to work with a team or something like that so you can just contact me with that so there would be no stipend so it be, it will be like for one month uh, if you don't want to uh, do an internship then uh, uh, you can also submit your projects or something it will be like published in uh, in your name in my website so yeah if you are interested what kind of internships so basically it depends um if you have a lot of skill okay if you have a lot of skill like in raspberry pi or node mcu in the cloud and everything you can just there are like lot of people even a guy from plus one he has a lot of knowledge in iot okay so they're like a uh, good there's a good team here so you can just work with them they're like uh, from delhi kolkata or some various places 
from NIT uh, from uh, even VIT or something good uh, good universities so you can just team up with them come up with a project idea uh, we'll work uh, as a agile team so we'll just um, uh, basically we are doing something like this to spend this coronavirus holidays or something so yeah you will be like provided with an internship certificate so if you don't have any skill like that you can just uh, take your time you can just learn i'll assign you some task you should work on that for example if i just uh, tell you about uh, uh, something like a rest api or postman tutorial you can just uh, take some time to learn that and then you will be like uh, writing how to use this as tutorial in my website basically this is the idea so if you are interested i mean this is like without stipend just to get one experience that's it like it, it is for a month maybe um, it starts from 15th actually the next batch is for 15th uh, they are like completing uh, one sprint so we'll call that as sprint here so the first sprint is completed successfully so we do have a, a demo session for the first team they are like doing this market analysis iot project they are each and every one are like in the home they took some 10 days and they are like uh, done with the project so it's just a prototype so when you start working with other people you know then you will get an idea and the interest and the competition to work so this is the idea so yeah if you can just work with other people and you can just gain a lot of knowledge so yeah that's it so if you are interested you can just mail me later iot opportunities better in germany or usa um i don't know if if you are uh, to be frank if you are like a computer science students better go with us okay so if you are like electrical or automobile or mechanical student just of or ec student you can go with uh, germany so the thing is in germany you have to learn the language at least uh, you can't survey without language when i did two levels before coming here in chennai uh, goethe institute so if you know the language even in the team there everyone will be talking in german i feel very uh, uh, uncomfortable because i can't match with their slang so better if you need any uh, good opportunities go for usa but the thing is it is very very costly and it will cost about 40 lakhs or 50 lakhs uh, for one and a half years or two years but in germany uh, you have a scholarship uh, the, there is no fees at all in germany so many people will be coming for that till what level we have to do maybe a2 so it's called as a1 a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 so there are like six levels so a1 a2 are the basic one and b1 b2 are the uh, intermediate level and c1 c2 is advanced so basically you can just do the a1 a2 before coming to germany if you're like opting for coming here so uh, many uh, companies here are like automotive as i said like bosch daimler audi volkswagen all those things are like um, in in germany they are like manufacturing units are there and uh, nowadays like iot and machine learning are the one they are like uh, opting for in i mean iot in the sense industry 4.0 and machine learning yeah if you had learned two levels in german then you can just uh, apply for the opportunities but uh, the thing is nowadays um, the competition is more rather than us so many people are coming to germany but the reality is uh, uh, it is tough to get a computer science job something like amazon facebook or google nothing is there in germany if you need a, a good job in uh, germany that uh, if you should go with a company like uh, volkswagen audi daimler bosch or something so there is no company for com especially for computer science there will be no problem i don't i don't think so after this corona pandemic i don't think so even uh, there are like students from india they have got the admits and they are like uh, starting their online tutorials from now so the semester has started 
and uh, the people are like starting from india they are not coming here and they have just uh, started online tutorials there they have got an access and everything so there will be no problem you can just apply for germany but if you are like more into focus focus more into machine learning machine learning field or ai better go with us the the salaries are so much i mean the salaries are huge like the starting package is something like 95k and um, in europe in germany it is like uh, 60k but the cost of living is like more when compared to germany in, in us the cost of living is more so you can just yeah decide